Everybody, it's it's your favorite gentleman, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and today we have Mr. Jason Sherman. He is a successful entrepreneur, award-winning filmmaker, published author, tech startup expert, and journalist. He has been featured by several media outlets, including the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, The Verge, and ABC News. Mr. Jason is fluent in Spanish and is classically trained violinist and was featured speaker on Fox's Emmy Award winning futurist TV show, The Exploration Earth 2050. Mr. Jason runs a web and mobile development shop and film studio from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And this man does it all. He is nonstop. He has a book. He has a podcast. He has uh, Amazon. Um, he's, his book can be purchased on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. And today he is about to spill some tea for us on Gentleman Style Podcast Show today. Please help me. Welcome to the stage, the incredible, the amazing, Mr. Jason Sherman. Hey, man, what's going on, Marcus? What's going on, sir? What's going on? Welcome to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Thanks for How having are me. You? I feel like I'm coming into like a stadium and like, you know, I'm like one of the basketball players or something. Woo, number 88 you- coming onto the court. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Give him another round of applause, y'all. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I appreciate you. The audience love you. The ladies love you. And everyone and my team love you. I'm single. So, you know, if anyone, any single ladies out there, I'm single. So, oh, there you go, ladies. Jump on it. Jump on. This man is a a heartthrob. He's stealing hearts and he's here to change the game. And after this show, you're probably going to want to connect with him. Um, He's going to be spilling some he he has a course he has a book he has so many different things that he is changing the world and impacting the world but we want to dive right in i ask every successful person this sir what's a morning routine successful people have morning routines that really set the tone for the rest of the of their day what's your morning routine that you do that really starts you off on a good foot yeah my my morning routine is the same thing every single morning i wake up early in the morning i check my emails, any kind of other texts or anything like that. I go right into a yoga uh, in my living room. I do some yoga for about 20 minutes to stretch out my body, clear my mind, have some coffee, walk my dog. It's always nice to take a nice little walk and then have my breakfast. And then I get right into work. So it's pretty much the same thing every morning. And doing that morning, you know, between the yoga, the, the walking my dog, the breakfast, the coffee, the just kind of taking my time, it allows me to feel like I'm not in a rush. And then when I get to work, I feel nice and calm and relaxed. Makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And so what you do so many different things and so many different avenues in business, uh, film, book writing, podcasting, multi-talented individual, you could do literally anything you set your mind to. Why? What? Why is your your podcast, why is your book Essentials, and why is everything strap, focused around um, Strap Up Your Boots? What, what, did I, what sparked that idea? Strap On Your Boots, the reason why I wrote the book, because I was bootstrapping tech startups for you know almost a decade. And while I was bootstrapping, I was learning a lot. And I made you know a lot of mistakes. A lot of entrepreneurs make a lot of mistakes. And I made a lot of them, but I learned a lot. And so once I started to uh, find out that the things that I was learning, I was now implementing in my next tech startups and they started to work and they started to succeed and I started to raise money, I realized, oh, so this is the stuff that people need to know. And I started to help other entrepreneurs around me. And I realized, oh, this is becoming repetitive. I keep helping them with the same things over and over again. So I decided it's time to put it into a book 
Now I can hand it to an entrepreneur and say, hey, read the book. Once you're done, let me know if you have any questions, then we can work together and you're going to kind of bypass, you know, two months of me working with you by just reading my book. That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. And so you, you've seen it all, right? You've seen businesses, startups, mainly startups, because that's what we're talking about. You've seen business startups fail. 90, over 50% of businesses fail within their first five years. That's the numbers. What's the best business owners who have ideas or products? What is the best way for them to validate their idea? Um, and you talk about this in the book, but what's the best way for them to validate their idea before they bring it to full scale in the market? Validating ideas are the most important things entrepreneurs can do. And it also happens to be the main thing they don't do. They always want to skip that step for some reason, mainly because their ego gets in the way. Um, they always say the same thing. I'm sure you've heard this a million times. My idea is worth a billion dollars. It's going to disrupt XYZ company. I don't need to validate it. I know it's going to be big. That's the number one mistake entrepreneurs make. I don't right. care who you are and what your idea is. You need to validate the concept, make sure people out there want to use it. And so by saying that right there, people, you need to get out there. You need to talk to people who are going to want to use your product or use your website or use your app or use your service. Surveys are a good way of doing that. Social media is another way of doing that. Friends and family, strangers on the street, anywhere, colleges, you can, you can, you know, once the pandemic is over, you go to a college hang out in the quad with a table, give out flyers, give out free pizza, give out whatever you got to give out to get people to answer your questions. I mean, we used to, we used to hand out free water ice uh, and, free pizza, and free pizza in college campuses to get them to download our app, give us feedback right then and there. And it was so valuable to get that feedback. And so what I always tell people is before you build anything, before you spend money on anything, before you spend time on anything, Make sure the market wants what it is you're building by asking the market. Yes. Facts. Facts. I told y'all this man would be impactful. I told you he's spilling. He sees a wide array of information. And so you, you touched on it without touching on it. And I want to dig a little bit deeper, but you touched on it. Target markets, right? Figuring out how does a business owner figure out who is target market is before, before I forget it. Should I figure that out before I validate the idea? Should I know who my target audience is? And how do I go about doing that? That's a good question, the way you put it, because it, they happen. I happen to tell people they go hand in hand. Yes, there's, a, there's definitely validating the concept first. But once you validate that concept, when you're talking to people about the concept, you're also finding your target market. Because you'll, you'll see people who are not interested in the idea and you'll find people who are interested in the idea. So let's give an example. Let's say you come up with a new gadget and you're talking to people who are in their 20s and those people in their 20s are male and they're in New York. Okay, they like your product. Now you're talking to people, let's say, in Philadelphia and they're 40 years old and they're female and they don't like your product. Well, now you know not to target the 40-year-old women but to target the 20 year old men and in specific cities too. So you have demographics, you have locations, you have genders. I mean, you can drill down to interests. You can drill down to their income level, their college or high school degrees, you know, everything. And this way, you know exactly who to target in ads online. Another way of doing it would be landing pages, right? You can make a really fun landing page for people who might be a, a younger demographic and then like a more serious landing page for an older demographic or whatever the, the case may be. And then you can see who signs up to which one. You'll have the data, analyze that data, figure out who your target market is. There's lots of ways of doing it. Those are just two of them, you know? And uh, in the end, you should always be figuring out who your market is. You should have a niche market and always target them first. And then once you start to grow, then you can kind of venture out into different markets, but always start with a niche market. Love that. Love that. I got, I got goosebumps when he said that. You see, see y'all, this is genius. This is not the stuff you're gonna get anywhere else, except here on the Gentleman Style Podcast stage or subscribing to Mr. 
uh, Mr. Jason's boot camp, strap on your boots podcast on YouTube. So check him out. He's on YouTube, iTunes, Google play, check him out. You got to check him out. He's a wealth of knowledge and he's, this is, this is nuggets y'all. This is nuggets that, th- that prevents you from failing. So stay with us, stay engaged. We have one quick commercial break from our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right, right back. Support for gentlemen style podcast is brought to you by Manscaped who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. We have the incredible Mr. Jason Sherman here on the Gentleman Style Podcast stage, y'all. Give him a round of applause. This man is huge. He just broke it down for us. He just broke down how to do better business, how to create a viable product, and how to find your target market in the research. And he listed several things um, through surveys, through marketing campaigns, right, to find who your target market is before you actually go into full-scale production and scale business. If you missed it, scroll back, check him out. He is phenomenal. Sir, I love the way how you just broke that down for us. And one of the things everyone complains about is the pitch, right? That elevator pitch and finding investors to invest in my business. You've probably experienced it numerous times where people are coming to you and they're, they're, they're pitching you their whole you know, life story. How should people be talking to their invest potential investors and crafting a story to pitch to them the right way? Well, you just said it right there at the end. You said crafting a story. And a lot of times entrepreneurs create a PowerPoint presentation with a lot of words on it, a lot of bullet points, and they just go through the motions of here's the problem I'm solving. Here's how I'm solving it. Here's the market. Here's how much money we need. Here's the technology. And it's very boring. It's very kind of monotone. Investors start to nod off, right? So you have to make it at least interactive, enjoyable, fun. Uh, the best way to do that is to tell a story. And so every idea has a pain point or it should have a pain point. And in that pain point, there's a story of how you came across that pain point. What happened to you personally? What happened in the world that caused this problem to surface? And then tell a story that the investor may relate to because now they're being drawn into the story. Oh, this happened to me too. You got my attention. Then you can give them some bullet points or whatnot, but at least you got their attention in the beginning. And what I always tell people before even doing a presentation like a PowerPoint is you have to have your 30 second elevator pitch down pat. And you're right. I have pitched a lot of investors in my career. I've probably pitched over a thousand of them. And I actually had a couple of times where I was in an elevator with a billionaire who I recognized and we just started talking and I had 30 seconds to pitch that investor. And believe me when I tell you, the elevator pitch comes in handy because you need to be able to convey your message, your vision, your mission in 30 seconds or less so that a four-year-old can understand you. And if you can do that, if you can say what you're trying to build or create within 30 seconds, very easily understandable, you'll have the investor's attention. Once again, they might ask you to have a meeting or they might want to ask to talk to you further. They might even take you to to go get some food or coffee right after that elevator. So that's the most important thing, I think, is to, to be able to say what it is you're building within 30 seconds, then tell a story, engage the audience. Also, make sure you have various versions of your presentation available for different types of investors. Because, you know, when I was pitching my tech startups, uh, for one one example, Instamore, my video dating app, I had like 20 different PowerPoints because sometimes I was pitching women, sometimes I was pitching men, sometimes I was pitching younger people, sometimes I was pitching, you know, people who weren't even in my industry. They were just like, you know, biotech. And I was trying to tell them how it could help in biotech. So definitely come up with different variety of pitch decks. 
your story, the pain point, have them interact with you, have them, you know, relate to you. And 30 second elevator pitch is key. That's huge. And that reminds me of my favorite television show is Shark Tank, right? The Shark Tanks, the Sharks. So pitching to you and, and, and you pitching to someone else, right? Like you said, make it relatable. Don't sit there. If you're a tech tech, uh, if Jason Sherman is a tech CEO, founder, entrepreneur, businessman, I'm not going to come to him and pitch the next best baby formula. That's not his industry. You have to know. And he said it, right? You have to know who you're pitching to. Right. And like he said, he had 20 slides. He had 20 different PowerPoint presentations to match his his audience, his investor. You can't just sit there. And and and, and I think people mess that up so many times. So that's huge. Absolutely. They don't research they the investors before they pitch to them. That's it. Research your investor. If you don't know who you're talking to, I could meet Kevin O'Leary in an elevator. And if Kevin O'Leary is not a tech investor, he's not a baby formula tech investor. Right. Versus, versus Jason Sherman, who is. So I need to coordinate. I need to make sure I know what I'm talking about and know the numbers, right? Know the numbers. So powerful, powerful. And that's huge. That's huge. How do you monetize your platform? If I can't, well, how do I? That's a, that's a loaded this? question. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is very loaded. But every, I, I need the biggest thing. We're not into business. We're not starting nonprofits. So maybe we are. But how do I make this product, this item, make money? The first step is to avoid ads. Everybody always mm. falls, everyone always falls on the crutch of, I'll just put ads on my app. I'll just put ads on my website. The reason why that's the wrong answer is because you need hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people seeing that ad or those ads in order to make any money. You're not going to make any money off, you know, 10 people, 100 people, even 10,000 people. You just won't. You need to have a large amount of users in order to, to make ads work. Plus, if you're putting ads on your website or your app or wh whatever right away, you're going to scare off the people who are using your platform because they're going to see all these different ads and people don't like ads. So the real question is, what is the core value proposition of the platform, the website, the service, or the product? Whatever that core value is, that's your monetize. That's what that's what you can monetize, right? You have to look at what do people find valuable in the, whatever it is you're offering. Then ask them in a survey once again, or email your beta testers. If you have like say 500 people using your app and you have a Mailchimp account, send them an email and say, "Look, answer this survey and you'll win a $50 Amazon gift card. I'll choose one at random. People will fill the the survey out. Trust me." And then you ask simple questions about which features do you like in the app, blah, blah, blah. Which feature would you pay or, or, or would you pay $5 for this feature per month or something? Or would you pay $20 a month to use the app? Or how much would you pay to use this feature? $199, $299, $399? You ask them how much they're willing to pay to use these features and then they'll answer it. If 80% of the people say they'll pay $299 to use a feature, you have your answer you know how much to charge for that feature. And they told you what they're willing to spend. So you're not guessing. So monetization is always to find what's valuable, what people are willing to pay for. Also, a lot of apps out there use gamification, which means making it kind of fun and engaging, winning coins or winning points, and then being able to use those points to purchase things on the app or the platform. That's a good way to do it because some people, Fortnite is a great example of a game <laughs> that, and I don't play Fortnite. I've played it before, but it's, it's a game where you, it's a free game. So they got you hooked. You can play this free game, but now you have to buy items inside the game, right? So they monetized by, by, you know, putting a new costume, a new skin, buying new weapons, you know, buying new things. And, and that's how they monetize, right? Their value was people being to customize their characters. So what's your core value proposition? How can you monetize it? huge that's huge and so I, I love how you break that down and i love how you 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 stretch that out and you say listen there there are many different ways to break this down and there are many different ways to to skin the same cat right um one a previous interview i did was uh, expert um on SaaS. right everyone is going to the subscription model everyone is shifting the focus from you know one time one sale you know wash rinse repeat now it's subscription 
how what are you willing to pay? Two ninety nine, five ninety nine, fifteen ninety nine, and then where is the value? Connecting that price to the value that you get. I, I you know, recently transferred over to a subscription model from my show. So you're right, right? There's many different ways to skin the cat, and you don't want to scare people off with ads, um, like I just did. <laughs> right. I saw, I saw the one ad. <laughs> but um. But yeah, you're so, so right. And so I want to backtrack a little bit. Um, we talked about investors and how to generate and create that story and that pitch for the person who investor. But not everyone is an investor. Not everyone is going to invest. Some people are mentors and some people are just advisors to what you're doing. How, what, what should I look for when looking for a mentor or an advisor? That's a good that's a good question. And I, I recently talked to somebody about this who was struggling. She was an entrepreneur. and I told her, look, you know, you're in the fashion business, right? She's trying to open up her own fashion uh, boutique, like a store. And I said, you need to find people who are experts in your industry. One of every kind of, uh, you know, facet of the industry. So one would be fabric. They know how to import, export fabric. One would be, uh, you know, maybe a fashionista who's been in magazines like Vogue and whatnot. Somebody who maybe owned a fashion line, a line of clothing and was very famous or made a lot of money from it. Somebody who is a distributor or owns a warehouse or knows how to distribute. Basically, the point is, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. You want to find people who are experts in different areas of your business so that when you are about to make a big decision, you ask them, is this the right move? Am I making the right call or should I do something different? And they will always say, well, no, I think, you know, don't buy that fabric. I can get it for you 50% cheaper from this company or don't distribute through that company. You're going to get locked up in 30 days of credit or whatever. Do it through this company that, you know, they know me, drop my name and blah, blah, blah. They'll give you connections. They'll give you the right answers. They should hopefully have had decades of experience to help you avoid a lot of mistakes. Think of them as your, you know, your, your, your guardian angels. They're always there on your shoulders and on your back to help you make the right calls, the right decisions to save you the, the heartache and the headache of making the wrong decisions. And typically these are going to be people that are in your networks, whether your family and friends know somebody, maybe from your universities, your professors, they know people, uh, maybe friends and family have people who work at different companies who they know. Maybe you went to networking events and you met people and just ask for advice, ask for feedback, ask for a cup of coffee. I, I want to run my idea by you. What do you think? And if they seem interested, say, hey, do you mind if we talk about this maybe once a month on a Zoom call or once a month I buy you a cup of coffee? And maybe some of these people will say yes. Makes sense. Makes sense. Love that. What's the best way? Jason Sherman, everybody. This is Mr. Jason Sherman here spilling some incredible, incredible tea. So we've talked about finding a mentor. We've talked about finding investors. What's the best way? Now um, I've found my target market. I've validated the idea and my mentor and my advisors have, have, have signed off and they say, Marcus, you are ready to go. What's the best way to properly approach the media and get engaged the press about my potential product or idea? What's the proper way to do that? There's a lot of secret sauce in that one. <laughs> <laughs> give us one. If you give us one sauce, one sauce. Yeah, well, one ingredient in the sauce is going to be to be a fan of the journalists that you want to talk to. Be a fan. Mm. So follow them on social media, read their content, tweet their content, post their content, mention them in your blog posts. Be a fan. Show them that you care about them. Show them that you like what they're doing. You know, uh, the more you talk about them on social media, the more you mention them in your blog posts, eventually they might reach out to you or they might respond to you. And you never want to ask a journalist to cover a story uh, about your company. You never want to say, hey, I had this cool. Look, I'm going to tell you a secret because I, I, I come from a journalistic world where I was a journalist for, for quite a few years. We get pitched every day by so many people and the majority of them just send a press release. Mm. Very rarely do they send a fun, engaging, short email that tells me 
that you know what it is I write about, that tells me that you're a fan of what I write about, that tells me that you care about what I write about. Sending me a press release, I'm going to just delete it every Ooh. single time. So, and most journalists do. So just care about the people you're trying to talk to and form a relationship with them. It's the same thing with investors. Form a relationship with them too. Don't ask for money. Don't ask for funding or anything like that. Just say, I want to talk to you. I want to, you know, I want some feedback. I'd love to know what you think. With, with, uh, with journalists in particular and the media, they're typically going to want to talk to you. They'll, they'll approach you after you raised money. So it's almost better to not even approach the media and just grind out your product, hustle out your company, get to the point where you raise some money. And then the media is going to reach out to you. They're going to see that you raise money in the SEC filing or on Crunchbase if you post it on there. Uh, they're going to, if you're, if you're, app or your service or your product is doing really well, they're going to reach out to you anyway. You mentioned Shark Tank. If you're on Shark Tank, by all means, the media is going to reach out to you after yes. the show airs. They're going to want to have a one-on-one -on -one, you know, interview with you. So I always say, let the media come to you instead of you coming out to them. And another thing journalists like is uh, data. They like numbers. So if you can provide statistics, um, you know, my company does this and we know that this demographic is doing this and we know that this market is doing that. These are the numbers we can provide. A lot of times journalists are working on um, pieces that go out months in, a, in advance or weeks in advance. So they might need to fill in the blanks with some things and you might be able to fill in those blanks. Love that. Love that. Jason Sherman, everybody. The man, the myth, the legend. We have one more quick commercial break. We'll be right, right back. You guys stay tuned, stay engaged, stay with us. We'll be right back. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level. Duke Duchess, which is our season level and the emperor and empress which is our most sophisticated level which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab we will also be sharing polls upcoming events and interviews as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly your support helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. Hey everybody, we are back to the incredible, amazing Mr. Jason Sherman! <laughs> welcome, welcome back, y'all. This man just spilled some incredible tea on how to take your business to avoid the press, press and media. Don't even take it to the press and media. Focus on the grind. Focus on building your business first. Focus on gaining the capital and the media will find you. That was a huge, huge nugget. And that is absolutely important. Mr. Before we talk about your tutorial, you have a course, you have a class that you teach all these tips and tricks and teas. So Mr. Sherman, tell us uh, what are they going to get out of this course? Oh my God, the amount of topics in the course is a really long list, but it takes you from, you know, validating the concept to finding your target market to building a prototype or an MVP, otherwise known as an, a minimum viable product, how to get beta testers, what to do with your beta testers, how to launch your beta, uh, of course, how to raise money, how to tell a story, how to scale your business, how to basically go from, you know, A to Z. It really is startup essentials. I mean, that's what it's called. And it was originally meant, I, I originally was approached by PhD students at universities in Philadelphia, um, University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School, uh, Drexel, Temple, like these big schools. And 
they they wanted to make their entrepreneurship program better. And so they liked the book. They like what the book said, but the book is, is it's a book, right? It's not really a hands-on course. It's more of a guidebook to help you along to build your business. And the course is basically a match made in heaven for the book. It's, it's really a more hands-on visual approach. It shows you um, the different techniques, the different tools, the different ways. And we, a lot of the stuff we talked about in your podcast today is in the course, but in more detail. So it, I really recommend it for anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur, doesn't really know how they, they feel like a lot of the gurus out there, the millionaires out there who have written books and say, Oh, you can do this too, but you can't really copy what they, what they tell you. And you're frustrated about that. Then my course is the opposite. My course is a very easily replicable version of what these people tell you. You don't have to be in the right place at the right time. You don't have to have a rich uncle. You don't have to have any money. You don't have to have a, a, a Harvard ed education. You don't need to have any of that. You just need to have time, motivation, and the willingness to put the work in. And it is pretty much guaranteed to work if you put the work in. It's just a matter of doing the steps. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. There you have it, y'all. The value, the value. That's the that's what we talked about earlier. The value, right? Is not is not about people often jump in and say, "Well, what wh what's this? What's that?" It's like there's the value. There's the thirty minute, thirty second elevator pitch, right? That's a lot of um, coursework jammed up. And I've bought books before, right? And the books are the the they're just the fluff. Not the fluff. That's a bad word. But they they they're the precipice of the overlay that you're not gonna get inside of his course. And so you all check him out links at the bottom of the screen. It's www.udemy.com slash course slash startup essentials. So check out a book, get in, check out a book, but get in that course. You have to absolutely check this out, sir. What's your favorite way to give back? Oh, that's a good question. I've been giving back for years and it's mostly, I mean, my offerings obviously is the best way for me to give back because that's how I help people the most. And I guess I like to just help people really, to be honest with you. It's, it's any kind of way I can help somebody who's struggling, whether it's mental health or, you know, physical health, you know, wellness, well-being. Meditation is a really good way to get through the day. You know, if somebody's struggling out there, if, if you're not happy, if you're stuck in a rut, if you don't like your job or you're unhappy in a relationship, try to look at the positivity around you. Try to think about what you could do to get yourself out of the negative mindset that you're in and focus on your goals that you want to reach. And just remember that it's a day by day, step by step process. Nothing's going to happen overnight. You have to take your time. You have to be motivated. You have to be determined. You have to be persistent. You can't give up no matter what you do, because if you give up, then what else are you going to do? right? You, you, you just can never give up. You have to keep moving forward. Take the mistakes you made as a learning experience, right? Lessons learned. Use those lessons learned for your next battle. Attack and succeed the next time around. Yes. Jason Sherman, everybody. He is the man, like I told you, the man, the myth, the legend. You all, I told you, are in for an absolute treat. Sir, this has been absolutely phenomenal. You are an amazing, just multi-talented intro. Um, person that that is changing the landscape for entrepreneurs to take their business not only to thrive but to take their business to the next level thank you so much for giving back in this way how can my audience connect with you how can we grow with you how can we learn more well thanks for having me marcus it was fun and you had some really good questions and the easiest way for people to find me is on my website jasonsherman.org i'm on social media all my channels are on there uh, my website really gives you the links to everything it tells you my story it's got my blog on it it's it's got my course my book my podcast my youtube channel my free startup essentials guide which is uh, one or two pages of free it's like a cheat sheet as to what you might expect from my offerings and uh, really that's the easiest way to get in touch with me is through my website you'll find my social media on there 
absolutely absolutely check them out y'all get on that website get involved and get connected at jasonsherman.org that's jasonsherman.org absolutely powerful sir thank you we got sorry y'all we gotta let him go this man has several companies to run <laughs> so we gotta let him go but i hope this message has served you i hope this was impactful sir thank you for what you do please don't ever give up the world is changed by you every single day and we need you so please don't ever ever give up i won't and i'm here awesome awesome and thank you all for tuning in to the gentleman style podcast show i hope this message has served you all and i hope this message was impactful it definitely changed my life for the better so like i end every show take care of your families take care of your business and take care of business this is marcus norman of gentleman style podcast show and jason sherman signing off love you guys bye see ya.